good morning all thank you for your interest in the guest lecture uh, hope you are all ready for this uh, now i ask uh, rimsha ivan student to introduce the uh, guest resource person for this session for this guest lecture thank you good morning all we have been solving problems using c for quite some time now for quite some time now how many of us know the conversion of the source code to the executable code or what exactly goes in the memory of the systems that we use in our labs i certainly do and the questions and the answers to these questions are very important for our placements as well today's speaker is a trainer by passion and a ceo by profession as a graduate from kakatiya institute of technology he has worked at value labs in the development of e learning and e commerce platform for 5 years after being a ceo at coin for 10 years he is now he is now the ceo of gold street a one stop solution for all the career needs of a student let's get some insight on the journey of a program from dot c to dot exe from somebody who's been there and done it i welcome to you the ceo of gold street shri k durga nadeen sir thank you sir that was wonderful thank you yeah um good morning everyone i sent a message in the chat box good morning so okay so all set for a wonderful session today where to start okay so you are all from computer science and it background right so uh, you all are ought to become software engineers so there is no other option for you all trust me okay very very few options if you want to go for mba or something like that but you most of them wanted to become software engineers okay so my first question to you all okay which i want you all to start messaging in the chat box is you all know that the whole world is driven towards automation the whole world not now from past 20 30 years every business process in this world is thinking to automate something or the other okay in its various threads of implementation yarishik 4.0 industry 4.0 wonderful that's the start okay so yeah so every uh, means uh, whichever uh, business process you take across countries across the world okay every business owner is trying to think about automating some thread in his system okay so the whole world is driven towards automation okay now my question is my question is why is the whole world driven towards automation okay what are the advantages of automation that is my first question for today why is the whole world driven towards automation any answers students yeah cut the labor cost labor work minimization wonderful wonderful machines can perform repetitive tasks efficiently that is awesome yaar to save money and time at man power wonderful wonderful so the two important causes okay for uh, um, the whole world to get driven towards automation are accuracy okay and reduction reducing human effort wonderful vinay higher production rates and increased productivity wonderful wonderful guys just this the interaction should go in this way okay i'm i'm assuring you that this 3 uh, hours will be a game changing 3 hours for you all okay yeah so as i told you the whole world is driven towards automation okay for getting these two aspects one is accuracy and second one is reduction of human effort and guys uh, i realized when i went when i joined a software company and i started working there okay for 4 5 months then i understood the real power of reducing human effort okay real power of reduction of human effort okay so it is massive most of the important reason is it generates or 
uh, it does not let us uh, put lot of investment. Okay, at the initial stage, you will be putting a lot of investment. So, so at the initial stage, you have to put a lot of investment, but after that, you'll get huge profits. Okay, I'll give you a small example. Um, there is a finishing school running in your college. Okay, only registered students should get into that finishing school. Okay, so around uh, 200 students got registered and they only should get into the finishing school, that classroom every day at a stipulated time. Now, the point is, everyone are getting in. There should be someone at the outside door, okay, taking the va validation that these are the students who got registered for this. Okay, so that someone, he has to be paid. So, every month that that uh, clerk or watchman is paid around 6,000 bucks for doing this work. Every month, every day he has to come take that uh, validation for two hours. Okay. And uh, he is moving. Uh, he took and after two hours he'll go. So six thousand per month. Now, if it is six thousand per month, one year, okay, it is seventy two thousand per year. And if it is for five years, it is around three point five lakhs. Yes. So now that three point five lakhs of investment, okay, he can just turn the table round by setting up a biometric device or a scan device. Yes or no? And do you all know how much is that biometric device or a scan device students? Any idea? Approximate cost for a five year warranty biometric device or a scan device? Absolutely, Ishwar Aditya. Yeah. So it is around 5,000 to 10,000 rupees. That's it. Yeah, 5,000 to 10,000 rupees. Where is 3.5 lakhs and where is 10,000? So this is how it is. It is giving 30 times multiples of profit students. 30 times minimum. You take any, any manual service. If you're automating, that is the advantage people are going to get. My first project is an Australian based e-learning project where value labs was investing around nine crores. Sorry, uh, the client is investing in two value labs for developing their software. And he was investing around nine crores into that software. And the other day when the client gave a presentation to let us know how important it is for their company, I was shocked that it is going to generate, means it, it will take two years to develop that software, but that once the development is done, in the next three years, it is going to generate 876 crores profit. See, understand the magnanimity of it. Okay, and the profitability of developing a software for any organization. Okay, so shall I go ahead with the next slide? I need a yes from all the students. Hope you're all aligned with what I'm, I'm speaking. I'm going a bit slow, but I'll catch up the speed. Just wanted to understand the students. Wonderful, wonderful. This motivates us whenever there's a webinar or online session students. Okay, if there are many yes, yeah. Okay, we can continue in the right direction. We are going in the right direction. Thank you very much. Thank you for all the yes. Okay. So the next point is now we all understood in the who, who all are in this webinar. We all understood what are the advantages of automation. The next point we need to understand is okay. We, un we understood that we need an automation, but what kind of automation? How many different types of automation are there? That is the first question. Second question is what do you need to develop that automation? Okay, the first question is how many types of automation is there? Can we give a similar solution to all the problems in the world? No, somebody wants a billing software in their mall. Okay, somebody want a billing software in their mall. Will you make a Facebook application of a billing software? No, somebody wants a social networking site for CBIT. Okay, that every requirements, okay, define or scope defines what kind of software you want to develop. Okay, so the next 15, 20 minutes, what we are going to study is about how many different types of automation we have. Okay, second one is what do you need to develop the automation? Okay, thank you for all the yes. I'm going to the next slide. Yeah, this is the next slide. All the blocks on the, uh, the left, uh, right hand side of your monitor, Okay, in the 
uh, red peachish color okay are types of applications okay get ready with your chat boxes guys okay these are types of applications i want i want you people to understand all these applications very clearly okay and i want you people to answer what are they let us go with console application what do you mean by a console application student what do you mean by a console application these are the four types of applications console application standalone application web application and hybrid application good aditya specific to that particular device okay okay any other answers console application an application with a terminal interface wonderful wonderful suman you caught another perception of the same same answer same question okay good good console applications are text only computer interface wonderful rishi so you all have the definition ready console applications are applications which run depending on the operating system and whose input and output transactions are done on a command prompt window okay that black dos window okay or a blue window okay i hope you all use turbo c or porlent c or ansi c software okay in that you see a output screen coming in a black window that is called command prompt window and a terminal interface so in that interface you can only write text give input get the output so that interface applications are called console applications any examples you have seen in your real world real time did you experience any uh, uh, softwares which are console applications <laughs> calculator okay okay powershell bash scripts okay these are all uh, not in real time you are not using it in your daily life there is something okay uh, the old atms now the present atms also to most of the extent they have a better interface but all are console applications and if you see some few atms you will have that black screen in it or a blue screen did you ever observe it yes or no in atm machines all uh, right thank you vanish so that is called a console application and trust me guys 75 when c got introduced to this world 72 to 75 for 10 to 15 years console applications ruled the world whoever wants a software they used to write a program give it to them an exe okay console applications ruled the world okay so these are console applications let the definition be very clear application which runs depending on the operating system of your computer and has all the input and output transactions through a command prompt window all these are called console applications okay or the next second type of applications are standalone applications yes yes guru you are using linux i use wonderful wonderful yeah linux is completely console okay and it is a very good practice to it, it is in uh, uh temp means immediately it will be tough but guys use linux as an operating system okay don't use windows windows is for computer illiterate okay you're all programmers future programmers you need to work on linux okay you start working you will you will understand the real essence of programming okay we'll we'll get into it we'll get into it the second kind of application is standalone applications for us okay what do you mean by standalone applications and how is it different from console any answers guys one more point are you all did you all uh, i know it is an over expectation from my side but you all have a book to write right i don't want you people to just hold it in your brain okay please write it in a book every definition i tell you i'm promising you there'll be you can use it at various instances at various places okay in the next 3 4 years of your engineer to run locally on a device wonderful wonderful who is that yeah vinay vinay yeah siddeshwar absolutely all standalone applications run locally in your device okay they are not facebook or instas uh, any examples for standalone application students 
I'll tell you the definition, but just wanted to understand. Any examples of standalone applications? <laughs> Aryan basic games. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? No, don't mention all the games here. Yeah, notepad. Wonderful, wonderful. In fact, that was good, Vijay Indir. Yeah, all browsers are standalone applications. Wonderful, wonderful insight. I'm happy to be here today with the way you people are interacting. Okay, please get go ahead. Okay, this session should become very memorable for me. Okay, wonderful. This can you Microsoft. <laughs> okay. Guys, guys, okay. Acrobat is also uh, okay. Any applications which you have seen in the real world outside, not in your computer? Yeah, Arian, Microsoft uh, Word, PowerPoint, Microsoft Office in itself is a standalone application. So, any applications which you have seen outside? Mm -mm. Literally every executable file on your disk. Yeah, Guru. Uh, yeah, every executable file on your disk in your system is fine. But outside, in the outside world, you, did you experience any standalone applications? You may not, you may not be the part of it, but some other person using it. Okay, I'll tell you. Um, a billing software in malls. Uh oh, Guru servers. It's a complicated topic where uh, you, you may get into web if you're talking about servers. That is the third third kind of application. But we are speaking about uh, applications. Okay, billing softwares in uh, big software malls. Okay, they are all standalone applications. Okay, so let's understand what is standalone application. Application? Yes, yes, Mustaq. So standalone applications are applications which have, which runs depending on the operating system of your computer. Okay. But has a minimal UI. Minimal UI. Console applications does not have UI. Standalone applications has UI. No wish to. Cloud services are all internet based applications. I'll come to that. Yes, Siddheshwar, I'll make a PDF of it and I will share it with uh, Pratima ma'am. Okay, you can take this PPT, no worries. Okay, Siddheshwar, that does not mean that you will stop listening to this class today. <laughs> okay, yeah. I hope you all understood what is standard application, right? Application, which? Application, which runs depending on the operating system and has a minimal UI. User interface. UI means user interface. GUI, graphical user interface. Okay, done, done. This is standalone applications. The third type of application is, thank you, thank you. Third type of application is web application students. Okay, now everyone will answer this question. What do you mean by a web application? Wonderful, Vinay. It runs on a web, web server. Yeah, it runs on a browser. So that it is self-explanatory. You all know you have been using it. Okay. I'll just tell you a structured definition of web application. Application, which, which is deployed in a server. That application you cannot just put in your system and give access to everyone. Okay. Application has to be put in the server because server only has the ability to take requests and process them. Okay, so you put the application into the server. Okay, so deploy the application into the server. Then it is accessed in client browser. Okay, it is accessed in client browser through internet connectivity. Web application is an application which has to be deployed into a server, accessed in client browser through internet connectivity. This is called a web application. Okay, and somebody asked about uh, cloud. It is another version, uh, so version 2.0 or 3.0 of a server is a cloud. Okay, that is an out of scope topic for today. Web is a software that runs on a browser. Perfect, Nandita. Okay, runs on a browser, but that software, that is important. 
Okay, wonderful. Now the last one. What do you mean by hybrid applications? What, what do you mean by hybrid application? Applications that are installed like apps and other. Oh, super satric. You got it. Both native and web application. Wonderful, wonderful. JM has support on our various platforms. Yes. All the applications which you will see on your mobile phone, but they does not run without internet. All those applications are hybrid applications. Inka correct ka chappal ante the combination of standalone applications and web. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Okay. See the combination of standalone and web. Okay, is the hybrid applications. Okay, so now we understood the next phase. The first phase was why automation. The second phase was different types of automation. Yes, Pallavi, wonderful, wonderful. So different types of automation. We studied this part of the presentation. Now to develop, guys, guys, one more point. In the whole world, all the software engineers who are working, they will be developing any of these four applications. Today, somebody is working, he is, he is working on any of these four applications. It can be console, standalone, web, and hybrid. And they have their own requirements through which they will work. Okay. Now, the second point is type of applications we have understood now. Okay. Yes. Can we go ahead, guys? Need a yes. Okay. And the third point which we are going to study today, okay, is the green blocks, which means to develop these applications, what do you need? Okay, to develop such applications, what do you need to learn? Okay, what do you need as software which you have to, these are the four guys, four green blocks. Okay, four green blocks. And I don't want to talk about the last block, machine learning and IoT. Okay, that is out of scope for today. But any software, present day software, if somebody wants to develop any present day software, they should use either machine learning or IoT into their applications. Just take that block till there. Okay. Now the the next block is DBMS or cloud. Okay, DBMS or cloud. Okay, don't think much about it. It is just a place where all the data is stored. Okay, you give your user ID password, they have to get validated. Where are those user ID and passwords stored? In the database. Okay, you set a comment to a post, where are they stored? In a in database. Okay, all your emails, they're stored in database so that once you come back again, you can use them. Okay, so like that, DBMS is used. Now the important things are language and technology. Now somebody should enlighten me with, the, with, with this word called language. What is a language? More precisely, what is a programming language? Any answers, students? What do you mean by a programming language? It is a mode of communication. Instructions, okay, okay. Satvik, whenever we say, ah, yeah, whenever we say communication, it is between two. Uh, so somebody, Aryan told that it is between human and a computer. No. Man to machine communication. No. Yeah, you're right. Mode of communication is right. Every language, whether it is be, it will, it is English or a programming language, it is used for communication. But who are the ends? Who is the sender and who is the receiver? Between. It is not between user and a computer. Yeah, it is not between. Yeah, yeah. To some extent, Saujan is right. OS and user. Okay. Machine and machine. No Tanvi. Set of rules convert string. Given by programmers to computer. But one thing I'm liking in this webinar is it is so vibrant and all you people are providing a lot of content to me. Wonderful. Person to person, yeah, person to person is normal language. I'm talking about uh, programming language, I think. Mean. Of communication, but who is the sender and who is the receiver? 
user to the hardware come on come on user is right who is on the other part between developers and us it acts as an interface with the hardware hardware tho manam em maatladtam binary language maatladalsi vastadi no 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 with whom we are interacting come on come on user and os kleda ma user and processor Compiler OS. <laughs> Shall I? You all will repent. User and ID. Vijay, under you are very near. <laughs> okay. Programming language is used as a communication channel between user and the software application. <laughs> Gaurav, I think it is a Google co- Google definition you have given. Okay. Programming language is a means of communication, mode of communication between user and the software application inside the computer. Okay. If you write something in a program, then only a user can talk with the software. User can communicate with the software. user cannot communicate with hardware because user if he has to communicate with the hardware of the computer he should know binary language but we are talking about programming language which is a high level language got convinced or any doubts language is a mode of communication between user and the software application okay there are few other uh definitions also i'll come to that user and software application is one means means of communication okay another means of communication is between the application and the hardware if somebody would have told that user and hardware you people have told but if sir but when then after we compile the programming language it gets converted into yes see i'm talking about programming language okay programming language is used as a means of communication between user and the software what happens internally that is what is our class today i did not start our class yet okay vishnu that's a good insight just park it for some time but just understand that it is internally converting it into it okay but what is that which we are using to communicate with this software is programming language okay and if you also say this i would have said yes programming language is also used as a means of communication between application and the hardware of your computer when you write int i is equal to 10 what you are telling to the computer was give 2 bytes of space 4 bytes of space in ram this is what you are communicating this is what the application is communicating with the hardware okay so second mode of communication is between application and the hardware of your computer is this clear guys or having any doubt the first mode of communication is between uh, software and the user user and the software second mode of communication is between the software and the hardware of your computer for that also you use this programming language and the third third uh, communication channel is between application with its internal pages did you get my point guys application with its internal pages okay for that also you use a programming language so three important three important th- thought process one programming language is used as a communication channel between user and the software one software and the hardware two software with its internal pages three okay very insightful definition guys i understood it when i uh, means with experience of at least one year of programming after that i understood that it is used for three three ways okay this is programming language students okay now the most important and why are we here today is about this block about this block which is called technology me guys what do you mean by technology
Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll share the meeting password. Somebody has asked for. What do you mean? By, meanwhile, you people can tell me what do you mean by uh, technology? Rahul, is this fine? Yeah. Coming back. What do you mean by technology? Any answers, guys? See, we understood what is a language. Okay, what do you mean by technology? Pre-bit components that can be used to make other software. Okay, okay, Suman. The software that we use could that makes our lives easier and faster. Uh, Aditya, that is uh, English meaning of technology. Day-to-day -day advancements in the resources we have. <laughs> okay, okay. Guys, I'll tell you a simple definition of technology, okay, which is used for developing these softwares. That's good, that's good. Very insightful definitions, but most of them are not right. Means to ease work. They're all high level, not technical definitions. Okay, technology is a software which converts a programmed file into its respective executable file. Technology is a software which converts a programmed file into its respective executable file. Okay, so if you wrote a code, okay, if you wrote write some code in C language and you save it with .c extension, will it become a software, guys? You wrote an addition of two numbers program, okay, saved it with uh, .c extension. Okay, my job is done. .c. Okay, I got the software. No, that .c has to get converted into .exe. And who is responsible for converting the .c to .exe? This technology. Okay, this technology is used for converting this technology is used to convert .c to .exe. Okay, and every programming language will have its corresponding technology students. Okay, uh, C language has Turbo C, C++ has Turbo C++. Okay, Java has JDK. Okay, C Sharp has .NET. If you want to learn Python, then you have to use Django, I mean Django or Python or Anaconda. Okay, like that, every language has its corresponding technology because without converting it, okay, without converting it, we cannot use it. Okay, can you use a software without converting it and having it in a raw programming language code? No. Okay. So every te every technology has a lot of components which converts its programmed file into executable file. And today's class is all about what you have at the background, which converts a .c to .exe file. Yes, Vishnu. Integrated development environments and see Eclipse is an integrated development environment. JDK is the technology. Visual Studio is an IDE. .NET is the technology. Okay, when people were using Turbo C, Turbo C++, both were integrated and were given as a single software. Okay, depending on their requirement at that time. But JDK, .NET, Django, all have two components. One is the IDE component, another one is the technology component. Okay, so we are now talking about the technology component. Yeah, in technology, as you said, all integrated development cards environments will come okay so in technology you have the other two components which 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 are shown here it's backend components and libraries okay backend components is what we are going to study today what components are used in the journey of dot c to dot exe okay and apart from that libraries okay libraries what are libraries any insight what do you mean by library students
predefined set of instructions. Isn't Django a framework? Yes, G1. Framework and its backend components are also there in Django. Framework me is a part of technology G1. Rimsha has all pre-written files. Wonderful, wonderful. Place where all predefined functions are stored. Information of predefined functions. Oh, wow, wow. Okay. So you all have a good insight on libraries. Let's not dig into it. Okay. So backend components. Backend components are the components which are used in the journey of converting a programmed file into .hc file. Guys, and today's session, okay, for the next one hour will be about this component, backend components. Okay. So I hope you all understood till here. Are we going in the right pace? I will increase it slowly. Okay. I need a big yes from all the students. Okay. I'm going to the next slide students. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. So, so, uh, yeah, does backend components come under develop DevOps? No, 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 Vishnu. DevOps is something completely different. Okay. Wow. Guys, I'm really happy that, uh, you all are interacting well. Uh, yesterday I was having a discussion with Pratima ma'am and uh, she told uh, sir if we give access of chat not only she lot of faculty will uh, have a thought process that if if we give chat facility to students they'll misuse it but trust me uh, they, uh, I'm, I'm very happy that you all are on the on the go and all the students who are who have just joined okay trust me guys if you start listening to it with good concentration levels from now it is important till now it is just the background which i have set okay why are we learning backend components where it is important it is important because it is a part of technology why technology is important it is important to develop a software why software is important because there are a lot of profits involved in it <laughs> okay just to set a platform i have created this now, the next slide is going to be the game changer slide. Trust me, all the people who say that programming is tough and I don't like programming will fall in love with programming, guys. I'm ensuring you that. Okay, funny, what is UI development? UI is the interactive phase, interactive portion, okay, of a software. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dharani, this is the uh, password, I think. Okay. So uh, you, you all understood my point, right? UI means graphical user interface, which is the front end portion of any software. Uh, if you are using Insta, will you see the Insta code? Or who is, what all programs they have written? No, you will see the front end UI part, user interface part. That is UI. Okay, funny, did I answer your question? Yeah, Python is a language, Satvik. It is not UI. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so shall we go to the next slide? Yeah, yeah, you all already told yes. Let me not ask this question so many times. That's good, that's good. Right, Divya? C language is nowadays used only in embedded systems. That too, it has been upgraded to C++. And Divya, shall I tell you? Uh, if you are from EC student, get ready to see that C and C++ will be outdated and Python, Raspberry Pis and all are being communicated with Python language. Rimsha, what languages for UI, sir? Oh, uh, UI languages, let me type HTML, JavaScript. Now, these days, people are using Angular, React, Node. All these come under uh, UI. Okay. All the other questions, I'm really sorry. Okay. We'll get back to the session. Okay. Yeah. 
now we'll see what all are the components abiram css is uh, it comes under html if you want to understand more deeply about html then uh, you have to learn css you need to learn bootstrap okay all these are there but on a high level if you click html without css you cannot do anything there so that's why i told only html did i answer your question abiram okay so yeah coming back shall we go to the next slide here yeah, you are asking me a lot of doubts okay okay i'll go to the next slide so because we need to start the class okay um again i'm setting the context yeah guru yeah not future of systems programming yeah it is used in systems program i may not say it is the future it may be or may not be why are programmers using most of scripting languages are yaar simadri that's a wonderful question i want to answer that guys shall i answer that question and go back to that slide very important for everyone okay i need to use annotation okay see guys yeah yeah why everyone are using scripting languages for front end okay see guys every request okay yellow is not right yeah red every request which comes from the user okay every request which comes from the user okay oh, oh just a second yeah every request which comes from the user just a second why it is ah yeah yeah now it is fine every request which comes from the user okay has to go to the server okay and the response will go back to the user again you all understand this concept right okay this is user and this is server okay here if you zoom this portion if you zoom the user portion okay it has again two components that is user and user interface of the software in the computer this is your user interface okay if you if this user what he does is he interacts with the user interface okay now in this user interface what is happening is now from this user interface it will go to the server i hope you all understood till here okay in this user interface it will go to the server from this user interface it will go to the server now what scripting languages do is rather than sending all the requests to the server which is which will take a lot of turn around time okay which will take lot of turn around time what it is doing is using the scripting languages you can run most of the execute you can execute most of the code in your browser itself okay rather than going to the server if there are five tasks user has to perform on a particular feature okay first task he has done it now it has to go to the server come back and then show him is it not time taking so what where is he seeing it in the browser okay now what user does is what programmer does is he writes some scripting code okay and puts the software in the server when user is clicking at the first time from the server the scripting code will come onto the compiler sorry onto the browser okay when you are clicking for the second time okay this click will not go to the server guys because this javascript scripting languages are written and which we got to the browser browser will have an internal compiler okay which will execute and show it to you so quick microseconds your execution will be done okay so in five requests ah rishikesh has given the answer time complexity turn around time will be reduced okay so 
in five in five features five times he has to go to server and come if you are writing three features okay if you are writing three features in uh, scripting languages and putting it in the browser that means three times he is not going to server so reducing the time okay and now using node react angular people are developing the whole application in scripting language whole application okay so i hope i answered your question though it was out of scope guys guys we have to complete a lot of syllabus today so shall we go ahead i need a big yes divi it is already automated there are a lot of uh, websites which an illiterate can also de develop just by clicking on i want these features i want these links this is the font click okay our website will be developed rishikesh both are two pillars of the software no vishnu yeah scripting languages are confined okay to some features only money transactions it has to go to the server good question vishnu guys shall we go to the next slide please we have to write a code that executes fast and absolutely absolutely rich page are you well you want to run next slide ki please okay okay thank you thank you okay done so what are we doing what are we going to do in the next slide march pe untara you all forgot or you all know it what are we going to study in the next slide hmm back end components uh, which are in a journey from dot c to dot exe okay so we all know that we write the code in an editor yes okay we write the, the whole code in an editor okay once you write the code click on compile plus run you write the code and you click on compile plus run what is the next component you click on compile plus run right in turbo c what is what happens what the code has to go to the next component right what is the next component aryan uh, getting the console output is the last step compiler then assembler then oh oh vishnu you are on the track wonderful rishikesh manasa yeah the first component pre processor directives import wonderful wonderful so the first component is pre processor students okay you can see it on the slide the first component is pre processor there will be a lot of doubts why why this component at that level okay let me explain you very clearly guys when you write a program you use lot of predefined functions from the libraries okay if you take libraries as header files for example because we are doing the dissection of turbo c here okay if you take the uh, if you take the uh, concept of pre processor okay the predefined functions which we write in the code okay have to be ha should come from the libraries and sit in this program okay let me be more clear guys if you don't okay uh, take a program take an addition of two numbers pro program okay in an addition of two numbers program how many predefined functions minimum predefined functions you will be using in an addition of two numbers program minimum two okay uh, there is no point you have to find scan if but apart from that you should use main is not a predefined function 
you should use math yeah for some math header file you should use ha oh, clear screen get ch all are there but these are the three minimum yeah mayuka so um, yeah mohan so header files two but predefined functions three on you yeah okay let's confine to three printf scanf and uh, math.h so uh, plus sign of math okay now these three predefined functions uh, we are using the function call here okay where is the function body in the in the program we are using function calls but where is the function body of these functions in header file not in main not in main amo 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 in main you have the function call yes rishikesh function is called don't say defined it is called inside main but where is that where is the whole function body yes rishikesh where is the function body in header file perfect perfect now he is going through this journey first he'll complete pre processing then he'll go to the next component then he'll go to the next component then he'll go to the next component so he is going to all these components what will happen is every time they have to refer to this call they should go back to the header file for the body is it not a tedious process time taking process okay every time you do some process on this component on this program to refer it you have to go to the header file so rather than that he does the pre processing module what it does it gets the code it gets the predefined code okay this is your existing code okay where you have uh, function bodies function calls of three functions printf scanf and this this is the existing code all the bodies of these three functions okay are bought from header files and are appended to the bottom of this program okay making it one file this is done by pre processing when it is done as a one file when it goes to the next component and you want to understand you want to refer printf where is the function body of printf now when it goes to the next component it is at the bottom okay so it will refer to the bottom it will not go to the header files which is in turbo c again okay so in every component okay it refers to the bottom where the predefined code for all these existing functions are written for printf the printf body will be at the bottom for scanf the body will be at the bottom for math body will be at the bottom so when you are executing that also you no need to go to that header files again okay the code is at the bottom of the file and the best part is the dot c extension okay with which you started your journey will get converted to dot x after completing the pre processing module is this clear guys if you did not understand please mention that you did not understand i want to explain it again if yes then we'll go to the next component that's it that's it good yeah i'll explain very shortly once once again listen to it very carefully guys okay editor you will write the program yes yes i mean uh, good rimsha and kavya yeah so we write it we write a program in an editor okay in that program we use function calls predefined function calls like printf scanf okay we use predefined function calls now those function calls now that program should go through all these components compiler assembler as you all are telling uh, it should execute also wherever in whichever component these function calls are referred where they have to go to find the function body they have to go to the header files okay whose path is not in this they are a separate path header files libraries is separate every time they have to go there take the reference and come back that is a tedious process what turbo c has done what technology does is it makes the file independent of libraries it makes the file independent of header files 
how to do it step one identify all the predefined functions in your program step one identify all the predefined functions in your program step two okay check where the function bodies are there in which header files the function bodies are there step three pick those function bodies and append to the bottom of this program you have your program you wrote that addition of two numbers program you close the program end of the program with parenthesis bottom to that all these function bodies are appended once these are appended now tell me printf function call is the existing code where is the function body till now you told that before pre-processing where is the function body it is in header file before pre-processing but after pre-processing from stdio.h the function body preprocessor is getting it and appending it to the existing code at the bottom so function call is at the existing code top where is the function body now bottom of the code wonderful so do they need to go back to header file every time whenever it is referred no this is called preprocessing okay there are some directives of preprocessing which completes this work okay so you will understand when you go to the next components okay how it completes the it becomes an independent file that is the most important point before pre-processing your uh, predefined fun function call has to go to header file after pre-processing your predefined function call should go to the bottom of the code to check where the header file function body is okay this is what pre-processing does okay guys can we go to the next component if yes then guess the next component after pre-processing what is the next component hmm the next component is compiler okay compiler okay why compiler why do you need a compiler as an next component good save uh, check syntax sneha compiles and run the program you are jumping just what does compiler do it checks the code yes it checks the code and converts it into assembly language no 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 guys guys there are two types of languages high level language and low level language okay there are two types of languages high level language and low level language low level language again it is divided into two assembly level language and machine code okay so high level and low level in low level again you have two assembly code and machine code okay so no converter no compiler no assembler no interpreter can convert high level language directly to machine code okay it is a two step process high level to assembly code assembly to machine code okay so you have to complete the two step process ah uh, yeah vishnu so here you use compiler okay so the next component is compiler so you told two important points yes tanvi more precisely high level to assembly code okay so compiler first what it does it checks for errors syntactical errors okay which component does that parser okay parser checks for syntactical errors if there are no errors then it gives to translator which is another component in compiler translator converts this high level language to assembly code okay students okay this assembly code which got converted extension will also change to dot asm the file extension is also changed to dot asm 
Okay. What is the, yeah, sure, Vijayendra. First, in editor, when you write a program, you have dot C. Okay. From there, you complete pre processing. Okay. Pre processing converts the file into dot X. Okay. Now that high level language dot X file is given to parser. What is the first step of a, sorry, it is given to compiler. What is the first step of a compiler? Checking for syntax errors. Okay. Which component checks it? Parser. Okay. Parser's job is done. There are no errors. It will give to translator. Okay. Translator converts this high level dot X code into assembly code and changes the, the file extension to changes the file extension to dot asm okay so dot x to dot asm okay so that is the job of a compiler is it clear vijay are dot asm stored temporarily on ram no 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 must start still not yet i'll tell you which is what is stored in ram Sir, so dot x, it's dot c to dot x and then to dot asm, right? Wonderful, Vishnu. No, 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 Mohan. Dot c to dot x and dot x to dot asm. Still, we did not get dot exe. Mohan, please confirm. Dot c to dot x, dot x to dot asm. We did not yet gone to dot exe. Okay, now the next step. So from dot asm, what is the next component? Linker assembler, perfect. Nanasa assembler is the component. Okay, assembler converts this assembly level language code to machine code. Yes, yes, Adit, Akshara, absolutely right. Assembler converts to object code. And now tell me that dot obj file dot asm file is converted to dot obj file. Super, super. Wonderful. Okay. So this dot ASM file is converted into dot OBJ file. Right, Sneha. Dot C to dot X, dot X to dot ASM, dot ASM to dot OBJ. Now, what is the next step? <laughs> You're all correct. Yeah. It is not one component. It is two components parallelly. Okay. Linker and loader. Okay. Guys, you have been answering very quick. So just I wanted to un understand. Till assembler, I, I, I told you, linker and loader was very quick to tell. You all told very quickly. Should I explain why linker and loader are used or shall we go to the next component? Linker and loader. Ah, okay, okay. I'll explain, I'll explain. Guys, okay. Before explaining this, okay, let me tell you, uh, I will I will give you an analogy for it. Okay. In, guys, in real world, okay, in real world, we are all executable files. Okay. In real world, we are all executable files. And in real world, how we get executed. Okay. In a similar way, this turbo C execution component is also defined. Okay. I'll ask you a question. Now, when I told you, okay, when I told you, uh, all the students, okay, I, I told a statement, please get up. Okay. Okay. Assume that we are all in a class. Okay. I told, please get up. Okay. I told it in your understandable language, but if I tell you in Tamil and you have someone who knows Tamil and English a translator or an assembler to convert it into your own, your understandable language. Okay. So 
let's assume that there is a translator and an assembler also and it got converted to your understandable language which is english okay please get up what is happening between you getting that instruction and you executing it what is happening in between hope i'm not confusing you no 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 don't talk about linker and loader now i'm sorry vishnu what is happening see please get up is the instruction which you got you got that instruction and after some microseconds you get up that is execution you become an executable file and you are getting up what is bit happening between you getting the instruction and you executing it ah right vijayendra understanding translation is done by some other person you are understanding it what do you mean by understanding pavan what do you mean by understanding please get up means they told you please get up yeah 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 understanding means processing the commands so you tell me what is happening in your body yeah what is meant by processing processing is a wonderful word but we don't understand what it is doing which we need to perform some command yeah 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 that's what what is the okay uh, what is the first step when somebody tells please get up what is the first step yeah yeah vijayendra the instruction is sent to brain okay uh, okay okay stay there stay there instruction is sent to brain okay what is done in brain ah, wonderful abhishek so yeah yeah processing before processing what do you do yeah decide whether instruction should be followed or not. you take the instruction before processing it no no compiling is already done no yaar yeah before knowing the meaning rishita you are right knowing the meaning is right but before knowing the meaning first you have to store that instruction yes or no somebody told please get up somebody told please get up what is the next step you do okay take this instruction what is 6 plus 4 what you will do first yeah you remember you store that information yes the step one is storing the information that is done by loader guys in the program in this components loader does that work in real world we store it into the brain step one okay storing is done after that whatever you told is right first you do storing what is the next step your yeah, respond is last step we show what is the next step next immediate step you store what is the next immediate step somebody told in their previous responses process process or in process and a word ipre cheppina okay that word is very posh but it does not tell anything in depth analyze send the information which is stored yeah yeah it is stored okay few people told me that answer ha ah, comprehend to compare with what come on come on you are on the right direction yeah analyzing in a way to compare it with no 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 somebody told that uh, please get up we will yeah 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 please get up meanings will be identified yes neha already known memory is there for us right so there you will have these words please get up you will link it to those three words understand the meanings okay and get it from your predefined database in your brain now you understood why linker is here students did you understand why linker is here come here touch it see it is simple is it not very simple to understand whatever we are doing as an executable file in real world that is what is ha happening in in the virtual world yeah rimsha loader is a memory component in turbo c okay it loads any program if it is not loaded into the memory 
it will not start executing. Can you execute anything without loading it into your brain? That's it. Is it not simple? Guys, one of the reasons, though I'm a non-IT student, I'm from electronics and instrumentation background, okay? But though I'm a non-IT student, why I could get through programming languages, softwares is, this is all what we do in our daily life. Programming is all about what you do in your daily life. And when I started programming, I already experienced 25 years of my daily life. So it is easy for me to comprehend, process, analyze whatever your words you have used there. <laughs> okay. So you understood why linker and loader? Absolutely. Absolutely. Vishnu, good. First, step one, load the instructions into, first it has to get converted into understandable code. Okay. If I'll tell you like this, please get up in some language, which is called blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. If I tell blah, 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 will you do any execution of that instruction? No, you cannot do. Okay. Please get up. You can do. Why? Blah, blah, blah. Or you are storing it in your brain. But you don't have predefined uh, meanings for it. Okay. So if you have predefined meanings, linker component will send you the instructions and it becomes a executable file. Okay. So that is how you get your dot exe. So this is the journey from dot C to dot exe guys, but the work is not yet done. Okay. This is the journey and dot C to dot exe journey. Okay. Is set means the time taken. Yeah. They both are done together. Adit, that's a good question with micro to microseconds difference. Why I put them together is without compiler work, it cannot go to assembler. Okay. But linker and loader, they do, they just go on parallelly. Loading of some information linker starts. Yeah, Bhargavi. I don't say link or converts, but lo after loading and linking is done, Turbo C converts it into dot exe. So they, they cannot be, see, if loader, there is a problem with loader, then there is no linking done. Vijayendra, loader is very simple process. It just dumps the code into RAM. Okay. Okay. One more point guys. We were talking about storing the instructions into memory, right? Which memory? Now there is a component called loader. Yeah. Primary, primary means two memories, RAM and ROM. More specifically, which? Okay. I told you the answer. Guys, loader stores the instructions in RAM. Loader stores instructions in RAM. Now, I have one more point here. One more out of scope discussion. Do you all know why RAM? Shall we go, shall we go one more inch deeper into understanding? All your answers are right, but not insightful. Good. All the answers are right. There is something more deeper. Okay. I'll explain you guys. This is very important. And I'm cautioning you after me telling this concept, you should not fall in love with virtual world and programming. Okay. Okay, guys, let me go back to 1950s. All your answers are right. Trust me. I'm reading those answers and all the answers are right. Okay. But you need to understand why. Why is important, not what. 
and all the answers for what are perfect. Why is what we will spend five minutes of our time? Yes, 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 Rimsha. Current software is bought to primary memory from. Don't say primary more. It is only RAM. Okay. Yeah. Coming back. Okay, guys. When this system got introduced, I hope everyone knows that Charles Babbage came out with this system concept, computer. Okay, he came out with this concept called computer. Can't see your video. Oh, oh, is it? Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Okay. So he came out with this concept called computer in 1950s. And can you all, did you all read about how did he come to that thought process of creating an invention of computer? Do you all know that? Okay. Five minutes out of scope, but very important. Okay. Caution. Don't fell in love with computer or programming after this concept. Okay. What happened is he was actually doing some mathematical calculation students. Okay. Mathematical calculations. And suddenly he was in a surprise. Okay. With a wonderful concept in mathematics. Okay. He understood that for all the tangible calculations, mathematics has given a lot of numbers. Okay. For all the tangible calculations, mathematics has given a lot of numbers, natural numbers, real numbers, whole numbers. Okay. Integers, rational numbers, fractions, lot of numbers that he has given to solve many problems in mathematics, but everyone, every mathematic problem, which is solved is tangible problem. For that, all these numbers are given. But suddenly when he was doing that day calculations, he understood that mathematics has provided a kind of number which calculates intangible problems also. Problems which are not in the scope of human, they can also be solved by using an intangible number. Intangible problems, you need some intangible number concept. What is that numbers concept using which we can solve intangible problems which are not uh, in the scope of a human? What are those numbers? No, not. Ashrit, you got it. It is complex numbers, imaginary numbers. Okay. We use imaginary numbers in mathematics to solve problems which are, which are, which cannot be measured by a human. I'll give you an example. Um, how much distance is it from Earth to Neptune? You have to take an imaginary unit called light year. You would have no other way. Okay. So like that for EC students. Okay. Let, uh, you hope you all understood. Yes, Adit. Yes. You cannot measure it in km and meters, which is in the scope of human. Okay. So Charles Babbage was surprised that, okay, in mathematics, beyond the scope, if you want to measure, you use complex numbers. Then he got an idea. Okay. Humans do a lot of works in real world. This is mathematics. In real world, we solve a lot of problems on a daily basis. Now also we are trying to solve a problem in this webinar. Every student I'm seeing outside this window, bird is solving its problems. Every person is solving his problems. So what he thought is, everyone are solving their problems, but in the scope of real and tangibility. Why don't I create a virtual world where humans can solve problems which are beyond their thought process? It looks crazy, guys. But people who are concentratedly sitting and understanding it, it will, it will just kill them. Trust me. Did you get my point? I'll repeat it again. What he thought is in mathematics, as in all the problems are tangible. And if there is an intangible problem, it can be solved by using complex numbers. Okay. So all intangible problems can be solved by using complex numbers. Similarly, real world, we have so many problems. Okay. We are solving them by tangible thought process. But if we are given some virtual world, 
we can solve intangible problems also that is how he created this computer but the beauty is he took all the real world components into it he took all the real world components into it to build virtual world for example we use in real world we use two memory allocations to do any task in real world we use two memory allocations to do any task he just put those two memory allocations in a computer naming them ram and secondary memory two memory allocations ram and secondary memory now my question to you all is what are the two memory allocations which we use in real world which are directly proportional to ram and secondary memory in computer which charles has designed short term memory long no 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 i'm repeating the question from real world the components have been taken to build the real real uh, build the virtual world students okay in virtual world there are two memory allocations one is ram another one is secondary memory now my question to you all is what are ram and secondary memory in uh, real world Mm -mm. I'm sorry, Satvik, please. I'm really sorry if I have done something wrong, but please, Satvik Devi. Yeah, I, I'm repeating the question. Guys, what are the two memory allocations in real world which are directly proportional to? Yeah. RAM, RAM is secondary random access memory, which is temporary. Okay, what is it directly proportional to in real world? Brain. Uh, okay, okay. Brain is one memory allocation. I accept. But brain is uh, RAM or uh, secondary memory? What is brain? Brain is RAM or secondary memory? Brain is both. <laughs> Guys, guys, let's first uh, kill it. Okay, brain. Okay, RAM is temporary memory allocation unit. Secondary memory is permanent memory allocation unit. What is brain? Temporary or permanent? Brain permanent? Then you need to tell me what did you do in... Means we don't remember everything, right? How can it be permanent? Parts of brain can act as temporary, both temporary. temporary. Okay, okay. Let me tell you one thing. Uh, let me tell one statement uh, about brain. You will tell me the answer. Brain is a very complex component uh, where you, in seven years, if you don't think about your name <clears throat> and other people does not call you with that name, you will forget your name. You remember your name, your birthday, because you are thinking about it at any point of time in these seven years. Did you get my point? So brain is very temporary. It is not permanent. You are only remembering them because you are, you are thinking about it. No, no. Brain is only RAM. RAM is a temporary memory allocation unit. Brain is also temporary memory allocation unit. Ye vishyan naina, seven years, if you don't think about it, if you don't be reminded by other people, you will forget, forget that concept. That is brain. You are remembering because somebody, somebody is speaking about it. Yes, yes, Vijayendra. Okay, brain is RAM. Is it fine? All got convinced. I need a yes. Second memory is a time and primary memory. <laughs> Abhishek. Okay. Okay. Brain is RAM. Then what is uh, secondary memory in real world? What is secondary memory in real world? Books, papers, wonderful, wonderful, but they are not the right answer. To some extent, you are going in the right direction on Kochan. Because for illiterates, 
good rahul for very near vishayendra which stores info for long time like major wonderful google <laughs> historical dog heart no oh, divya wow okay i'll give you a, yeah few of the answers are very near and most of them you're all on the right track guys i'll give you an example for every work you do you use two memory allocations one is brain what is the other one mm, okay okay you got deviated no 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 heart spinal cord we don't store anything in our body guys no 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 body is not a memory allocation unit no no okay okay you were actually answering it right previously no 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 all those memories does not have any guys guys okay one is ram one is brain okay uh, tell me uh, can you execute any file without storing it in hard disk secondary memory can you execute any file without storing it in hard disk or secondary memory no so there is something which is which you have to use in the real world without that you can not use your brain am i doing it complex okay last guess i'll tell you the answer you have told you have told the answer last guess no 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 sense organs are information retrieval systems to brain they don't store anything ear does not store anything eyes does not store anything those are for songs and all they tell that just stored action yes, books not books okay okay i'll tell you yeah i'll tell you if you have told this answer it is the space on earth space it does not mean land only this point x y z coordinates this space also how guys can you do any work without using space on earth can you do any work without using hard disk space in a computer is it not great guys the way he has put all those things how is it secondary memory guys without see any execution you do okay you need second now i am executing something i am grounded on earth i have taken a chair which is referring to earth okay so there is no point without so tell me one work without using earth space you can execute as a human being no see same concept he has put it in a computer ah uh, vijendra space travel is beyond the earth's uh gravitational force so i uh, we are that is out of scope that is referring to prem sai prem sai see see understand it very clearly you want to execute a work okay what is the first thing you do you give space on earth for example i want to de deliver this seminar what is the first work seminar is the executable file so i will use my brain in the seminar is secondary first what i'll do i will give space for my laptop give space for myself once this space is given then i will use my brain to deliver yes mohan yes yes neha that's it any work see how see just try to understand how charles babbage thought okay every work in real world is done with two memory allocations one is space and another one is brain why don't i replicate both in the system if you see this background back end uh, components disk in editor when you write the program and click compile plus run 
it will ask whether you have saved that program or not. Yes or no? Because without storing it in hard disk, okay, you cannot store it in RAM. But linker does it. Loader has to store it in RAM to execute the program. Okay, so here at the place of editor, what it will do? It will store it into hard disk. At the place of loader, it will store it into RAM. Okay. Is it not? Now, did you understand how great Charles Babbage is in the way he thought? Okay. This concept, when I understood after two to three years of my programming life, I become, became a very big fan, fan of him. And understood how depth he has thought about creating a computer. Okay. So this is linker loader. Okay. Then you get your exe. Guys, coming back to this concept again, from dot C to the time the dexe is formed, the time taken is called compilation time. Compilation time. Pavya, thank you. It is amazing. I also felt the same when I understood this concept and that was the day. Okay. It was like every day programming for 10 to 12 hours was never tough for me. Because I understood that everything was taken up from real time. And if you get into the further concepts of Java and all, you will be on cloud nine, trust me. The passionate and crazy unto the amount of programming. That's why it is very, and because it is all linked with the real world, it is easy to. Okay. So, uh, okay, coming back to backend components, I wrote compilation time here. From the time it starts its compilation and execution, dot C to dot exe, it is called compilation time. Okay. Yes, Vishnu. Java is based on, yeah, yeah, Rimsa. Dot C, dot X, dot ASM, dot OBJ, dot exe. But the party is not over. Okay. After dot exe, there is time till it gives you the output. Okay. Exe will come out. A black window will come out. But your output is not. Yeah, yeah, Guru. That is called runtime. Yes, Vishnu. Okay. And there are three important components in runtime. Okay. Which are used while giving the output. Okay. So let's see what are those components. Yeah. The components are DMA, EB, debugger. Any, uh, what do you mean by DMA? Mm, guess, guess, guess. You can, you can. DMA block. It will be in runtime. Yeah, direct memory access or dynamic memory allocation. Both are means both do the same task. Yeah, dynamic memory allocation. Direct memory access. Good, good. What is meant by dynamic memory allocation? Don't say memory being allocated dynamically. <laughs> why, why dynamic, dynamic memory? Why do you need dynamic memory allocation? I'm sorry if there are any faculty in the session, but one point I wanted to make you clear in engineering. When I, in first year, when I started my, um, started studying C, this was the time when I lost interest on programming. I could not understand dynamic memory allocation in my engineering guys. I understood again when I went into that software company. Okay. But again, I map, I started mapping it with real world, right? Then I understood what is dynamic memory allocation. We give input during that time. Yes, Shivani. Perfect. The saving memory. Yeah. Faster execution. Wonderful. The most important point here is to understand why, why do you need dynamic memory allocation? Okay. Let's try to understand it to account all the different permutations and combinations of all inputs and good, good, good into a language, which could be understood by the user. No, no. Okay. Shall we understand it with the real time 
what how okay are we using dynamic memory allocation in real world while we executing our tasks what are we now in runtime or compilation time you tell me that point now at this point of time in this webinar what are we in compilation time or runtime that's a good point we are in runtime now we are using dynamic memory allocation okay and the best part is in real world most of them use dynamic memory allocation okay to explain dynamic memory allocation let me be let me give you some example okay if i'm asking you a question like this okay what is 6 plus 4 okay what is 6 plus 4 you will store 6 you will store 4 then you will say you will add them and tell 10 this is the process of your brain okay in runtime store 6 store 4 these two storing will be done in compilation time by the loader when you get the exe file you will say plus 10 okay this is one way of telling it there is another way of telling it uh, put a uh, initial uh, initialize a and b declare and initialize a and b a is equal to 6 b is equal to 4 what is c is equal to a plus b if this is the question asked you how do you enter how do you do it in runtime first a is equal to 6 is stored in compilation time by the loader b is equal to 4 is stored in compilation time then c is also given some allocation but there will be nothing there okay some garbage value now in runtime a plus b is processed 6 plus 4 10 that will be stored in c and you will get 10 okay here also there is no need of dynamic memory allocation but in the third set of pro situation where I tell who is the last uh, person who gave answer Revati. If I tell Revati like this, Revati, uh, you have to do addition of two numbers. You go to Pratima ma'am. Okay. She will give you a sum. Okay. Complete that sum. Get the answer to me. Now here in this program, in compilation time, does she have the values of those A and B? No, she does not have that value. So where she does not have the value, but she has to become an exe file and go to madam. Okay. So in such situations, you need runtime dynamic memory allocation concept. I don't know if you have understood. Guys, in all the situations, you cannot have all the variables and values in those variables ready before the program executes. There will be n number of situations where you have to allocate dynamically. Inkok example, Manch example. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Rimsha, I'll, ex I'll explain you with one more example. In the morning. Okay. Now COVID time, you're not going to college, but generally in the morning, when you say your mom, mama, I'm going to college. Okay. Yes, Monish, it will work in all the scenarios. I'll tell you. Mama, I'm going to college. Your college start, May, it starts at 9 o'clock. Will she call every hour? 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock? No. She'll call after 6 if you have not come to the house. Approx means just a normal scenario. So what is that? Mama, I'm going to college is creating memory from morning 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock. But the values in that memory are you creating it before? No. Are you telling that first class I will bunk, second class I will sleep, third class I will uh, listen? And the morning itself to your mom and starting? No. You are just telling I am going to the college. Memory is allocated. 9 to 4 or 9 to 5 or 9 to 6. Okay. But memory is allocated. You become an executable file. You start going to the college. You come to the college. This is all in runtime. So a lot of dynamic memory allocation is going on. Now in the same situation, in compilation time, you tell mama, I'm going to movie. Will she wait for nine o'clock to six o'clock to call you? No, after four hours, she will call you. So memory allocation is done for four hours in compilation time. But will you tell, okay, in few cases, you may tell which movie, okay, how many tickets, okay. But will you also tell how you're going to see the movie? You're going to laugh. You're going to, all those things are dynamic. Okay. Those parameters, you cannot get to the situation and do it. So there are a lot of situations and problems 
which needs solutions in runtime, which needs parameters in runtime. How are you going to store those parameters using dynamic memory allocation? Random, random. Did it make sense? Okay, tell me this point. So memory allocation is done in compilation time. Value allocation is done in runtime. Okay, what is that component we use in programming language, which gives us this facilitation, facilitate, facilitation. Memory allocation is done in compilation time. Value allocation is done in runtime. What is that concept called? See, dynamic memory allocation, if it has to be done, this component should, this feature should be there in programming language. What is that feature? Memory allocation is done in compilation time. Value allocation into that memory is done in runtime. No, Guru. Uh, 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 which data type? No. Guys, guys, you mistook my question, misunderstood my question. See, using that concept, memory allocation is done in compilation time. Values, see, if you don't use that concept and create int i is equal to 10, memory and value both are done in compilation time. If you write int i is equal to 10, memory allocation and value allocation both are done in compilation time. There is one more concept which you use, value will not be stored in. Uh... Yeah, Gautam, but I just wanted to, how is, okay, should I ask you this question like this? Guys, what is the concept which says, which stores address at one location and value at another location? What is it? Amma pointer. Guys, pointers is what, what I've asked you. Memory allocation is done in compilation time. Value allocation is done in runtime. This is the correct definition of a pointer. Why, why you need, ante, direct you can store value, right? Why you need address at one location, value at another location. Why to do such overacting? Only because address memory allocation should be done in compilation time. In runtime, it will search for that address, go and store some value in that memory. Guys, you are all so good students. You don't concentrate on what. If you concentrate on what, you will get stuck at what is pointer. If you concentrate on why he has done such overacting, where he has to store the address at one place, again, store the number at value at another place. Why? That will give you an answer which you people are eligible for. Okay? So don't stop at what? Engineering is all about why, which I did not do in my engineering. I'm sorry. Okay? If somebody does not do it, they know the value of it. Okay? You are all in your first year. Just run towards why. Never stop at what. You stopped at what? That's why you understood pointers to that level. Okay, fine. So you understood DMA block, address location during runtime and value allocation time. Ah, that is my last 30 minutes of class. We need to store location of variables so we can allocate memory before, but refer to it and fill that memory later. Absolutely, absolutely. Super guru. Okay, so all clear with DMA block in runtime also, we need to use some parameters, some variables. Okay, so to give maximum thought process, to facilitate those variables, we need DMA block in runtime. What is exception block? What is exception block?
which errors hmm runtime errors runtime errors are caused due to what is the definition of runtime error logical mistakes inko kind of error adi logical errors runtime errors okay i'll i'll give you the definition ya yeah, binam ah right shivani wrong inputs syntax errors are compilation time errors wrong inputs see guys runtime errors are errors occurred due to the values in the memory allocation is this okay this insight you have to get runtime errors are errors occurred due to the values in the memory allocation errors which you get after compilation yeah but why why do you get an error after compilation you can only get an error after compilation because of the values stored in the memory absolutely revati errors occurred due to the values in the memory not wonderful one so see there is a lot of difference between why and what i don't want to oh, oh, oh. i'm mute okay please repeat the definition okay okay guys runtime errors are occur errors sorry are errors occurred due to the values in the memory allocation errors occurred due to the values in the memory allocation those errors are called runtime errors remsa is it fine wonderful wonderful so that is so those runtime errors should not hinder the output okay all the compilation time errors are at the starting stage itself got filtered but runtime errors should not hinder the output so that block is there exception block which will catch the runtime error and stop the execution okay it will catch there are lot kavya uh, arithmetic uh, runtime error 1 by 0 okay which is infinite and it cannot be stored in a value as in in memory okay okay one more error is uh, uh, array out of bound okay stack overflow okay so like that there are lot of errors and shall i tell you one one definition about runtime errors not definition but you can take it and put it somewhere in your bedroom the person who has seen most of the runtime errors okay is the best programmer a person who experienced most of the runtime errors is the best programmer keep this in your brain when the why is clear how is he oh superman <laughs> wonderful wonderful happy to listen to that when the why is clear how is easier excellent okay did you get this point guys what i have told you if you are experiencing most of the runtime errors you are the best programmer okay done that is exception block which holds which catches the runtime errors okay now the last point component debugger what do you mean by a debugger what do you mean by a debugger one step to catch logical errors in code wow clear bugs in our source code no 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 they don't solve errors logical errors no 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 guys 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 debugger is not a robot 
they do not they cannot solve errors identify errors on which errors we are talking about runtime errors or compilation time compiler time errors parser is there for runtime errors eb block is there so debugger which errors we are talking about no abina which errors compilation time or runtime ah logical errors logical errors cannot be identified by a debugger cannot be cannot be removed by a debugger it's a wrong thought process guys i'll tell you the definition of debugger debugger is a tool which is used which displays the line by line execution of the code to the programmer debugger is a tool which displays line by line execution of the code to the programmer no 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 banu removing runtime errors right compiler parser also just identifies the errors <coughs> removing only human can do debugger test support and see which line is not executed bargavi debugger is a tool which displays line by line execution of the code we should test the code we should see which line is not executed there is a slight thread in between i'll i'll explain i'll tell you again what is the difference between debugger and guys this is a wrong question you should ask me what is the difference between debug interpreter and compiler debugger is a runtime component interpreter to compiler are co compilation time components which are converters debugger is not a converter can you see okay i'll give you an example guys i think this will clear all your doubts okay let me give you an example no mustak debugger does not format code ya yeah, guru helps to find logical errors i'll tell you now see uh, who is the last person here guru is the last person okay guru uh, guru wrote a uh, 20000 lines program okay guru wrote a 20000 lines program okay and uh, he went he, he, that is a music player code just a second guys okay guru write a 20000 lines of code to develop a music player software he went out he came out of that project mustak came into that project okay now how will he understand those 20 line 20000 lines of code with the documentation what guru has given he will execute the code but in microseconds all the 20000 lines of code is executed and gives the answer then how can you just see what is written and what kind of errors are there now what happened with uh, mustak is guru left one logical error unfixed now that work has been given to mustak okay one logical error now what he does is now where is that error he starts understanding the code line by line there is a for loop at 800th line of code for loop that for loop is looping 800 times at the 800th line of code there is a for loop which is looping 800 times and at the 600th time okay in that for loop at 49th line there is some logical error how will he find out did you get my point at 800th line of code there is a for loop which is looping 800 times and in those 800 times 600th time situation he should be there in that loop at 49th line there is a problem how will that guy go to that place to identify that the problem is there using debugger what does how to use debugger did you use, uh, use the concept of tracing tracing putting a breakpoint executing the program uh, brown line and you also get an yellow line if you have not done it please do it guys you put a breakpoint banu banu interpreter and debugging i'll tell you the difference but first come back to debugger
okay debugger tracing is done using debugger tool tracing means you wrote a 20000 lines program now you wanted to see what each line does ha uh, hamaya mohan code walk through okay what each line does if you see if you click on compile plus run the whole code is executed once in microseconds it will give you the output how will you study each line of code to study each line of code step 1 okay put a breakpoint after main function on the first line breakpoint which is a brown line once you put that breakpoint you click on compile plus run your execution stops at that breakpoint showing you an a yellow line yellow color line and that yellow color line is it shows you the execution of the code line by line okay first line second line then you have a function call from there it goes to the function body which is at 40 line the line it will go there there is a for loop there which is looping 200 times that for loop will loop 200 times that yellow line will show you 200 times okay this is how that yellow line is debugger which shows you line by line execution of the code now, who should see where the error is? It will take you to that level. Now, if you want to go 600th time in a for loop, how you will go? You wanted to go 600th time in a for loop. How you will go? In that 800 times for loop, you will write in the for loop, you will write if i is equal to is equal to 599. Open parenthesis. Stop. Put the breakpoint. Close the parenthesis. Now you execute the program. That if condition, it will execute only at the 600th time. So it will stop. Then you go down and you will identify that at the 600th time, it is the requirement of the data type is float, but we have given int. So it is trimming the number. So you are getting the output wrong. So he changed it to float. Now, who is, who is fixing the error? What kind of error it is? Logical. Who is fixing the error? Human. What is debugger doing here? Guys, what is debugger doing here? Not removing the errors. It is displaying. It is taking me to that error. Who is going to the error? Me. But it has to go into the loop for 600th time. Only debugger is used for that. Identifying is also done by me. Debugger is a tool which displays line by line execution of the code to the programmer. Is it clear, guys? Debugger is a tool which displays line by line execute. Display errors, Kadama, Revati. Display line by line execution of the code. Going to the error, fixing it, we should only do it. It is manual, Vishnu. It is just a tool which you put a breakpoint, you will see it. Ah, right, Abiram. Displaying code so that human can find the error. <laughs> displaying the instance of that code. Alekia, locating the error, going to that place, debugger will help. How can you go to 600th time in that loop? Only with the help of debugger. But who is locating that error? Who is fixing that error? Programmer. Okay? So understand this definition. Debugger is a tool which displays line by line execution of the code to the programmer. Fixing, locating, logical errors is the work of the programmer. Is it clear? That's it. This completes the first phase of our seminar today. Syntax. No, 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 no. Debugger will not show any errors, Rimsa. Debugger will show you the execution of the code. 
generally if you execute a program no one will show you the execution of the code only debugger can show you execution of the code who is good runtime errors are checked by eb block compilation time errors are checked by parser so what are the other errors left logical errors which human does as a mistake okay those things we should only fix we should only identify and fix debugger will help us yes vishnu display the code where the execution ah right 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 perfect right rim sir amma yeah so this completes the first phase of today's webinar back end components the journey from dot c to dot exe and from dot exe to output okay one question which is more in uh, turbo c's life cycle compilation time or run time compilation time is more in turbo c's life cycle next question who is showing errors no one is showing you, you are talking bani you are talking about logical errors if it is run type errors eb block will show if it is compilation time errors compilation will compiler will show logical errors no one will show no cheskunna mistake adi no one will show you should only show you should only identify you should only fix debugger will show the execution cycle line by line execution of the code it will show which can help you to identify the errors and further fix it guys if you want i'll explain debugger again but it is very important component one more statement if debugger is the best friend of the programmer he will be the best programmer if debugger is the best friend of the programmer and he spends more time with the program debugger then he is he is all he will also become a best programmer okay is it clear guys now i asked you compilation time and run time in turbo c right which one is more compilation time is more run time is less your answer is right which time is more in real world which time is more in real world compilation time or run time you are all awesome kids i am very happy today yes run time is more so that's why in 1990s new technology has come with more run time and less compilation time which is the most powerful technology till date and for the next 30 40 years also which one is that this is turbo c technology in 1990s a new technology came into picture which has more run time and less compilation time and using that technology if you build softwares they will be more realistic which technology technology not language jdk with java Nineteen ninety six, still going strong in all the companies. Okay, coming back to questions, which one is better, interpreter or compiler? Guys, you cannot map match both of them. Compiler is a licensed version. Interpreter is open source. So whoever wants to buy a compiler, they have to buy it as a license and use it in their system, in their technology. Interpreter is open source. So open source, it is a bit. Uh, what do you say slower okay so interpreter is bit slower it executes line it compile it checks line by line but compiler whole program at once it will check and give you the answer okay uh i'm not talking about 
technology being open jdk is also open source but to you to implement that technology he used a compiler inside that compiler is not open source that is where they hold that license oracle open source is bought by apache apache is bought by oracle all these things have happened in the last 20 25 years what is the relation between processor and ram and devices i mean the processor is the component which gives instructions to ram storing removing all those instructions to ram is given by processor is it clear compiler is better yeah. shall we go to the next and the most important step and you all need to help me i know you will it will be very inconvenient to you all but this seminar has to be extended to oh it is till 12:30 right okay not a problem okay 12:30 we'll sharply close it but next 40 minutes you will now this is uh, i hope you all are in the journey of finding it more interesting but this point will explode the next concept will explode okay it will trust me it is like it is a game changer for me when i understood in my early days of programming okay i need a big yes big yes from every student that for the next 40 minutes i know it is very tough first thing is ippudu varaku you have been sitting like this being so vibrant and interactive i have become a very big fan of cbit students i'll tell this to pratima ma'am and i'm promising you i'll come regularly for taking this sessions because for teachers for trainers reciprocation is the most important and if somebody is doing it trust me it is like we give our life to it that is how trainers are teachers are okay thank you very much for that reciprocation now let's get into the last topic for today that is memory management and which memory we are talking about hard disk or ram when we are talking about memory management yeah it is ram what do you will manage in hard disk we are talking about memory management in ram okay i'll go to the next next slide just give me a second okay okay sorry i'm back so to understand memory management in ram the first thing you need to understand is ram okay so before getting into ram okay let's try to interpret this program okay just read this program once what is the output of this program yeah very simple program but that is not the question i just asked the okay now my question is no 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 it is simple c this is a c program okay now my question is 
Yeah, 140 is the answer, but that is not the question. The question is, there are five variables I have used in this program. A, B, C, D, E. Okay, what is the scope of the variables A, B, C, D, E? Where all it is accessed? A is global, global in the sense, where all it is accessed? Throughout the program, good, good. Good, good, throughout the program. PCDE. They are all local variables. In their respective functions, they are accessible. Wonderful, wonderful. Scope is fine. What do you mean by lifetime of a variable? Good, good. What do you mean by lifetime of, a, of the variables? Existence of the variable in time for which memory is allocated to the variable. Wonderful, wonderful. How much time memory is allocated in RAM? Super. That is lifetime of the variable. This is also not the question, just a temporary question. Now the actual question. Okay. Listen to the question very carefully. If the lifetime, sorry, if the uh, program, if the execution time of the main block if the execution time of the main block is 20 seconds and execution time of the add block is 5 seconds, okay, what is the lifetime of the variables A, comma, B, comma, C, comma, D, comma, E? Give me, give it to me like that. A, comma, B, comma, C, comma, D, comma, E. How much is A, B, C, D, E? Give me the whole array. 25, 20, 25, 5. Oh, wrong, wrong. A, 20, B, C, D, 5. Wrong. 25, 20, 25, 5. Wrong. 5, 20, 20. No. <laughs> All 20. <laughs> no, 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 no. You have given one or two, right? Okay. Most of the people have see D and D e, five, five. All are clear. Now tell me what is ABC? 45. No. D and D e, five, five. Everyone are clear. I am also clear. B, C, 20. No. 25, 25, 20. No. Guys, guys. Mm. Okay, okay. We're getting confused. Okay, how many people? Okay. Oh, how many are there? So, voting here. Okay. Guys, shall I tell you the answer? You will all, you all will repent. Repeat the question. Okay, this is exciting. Guys, main function, main function, main block execution time is 20 seconds. Add block execution time is 5 seconds. What is the lifetime of the variables A, comma, B, comma, C, comma, D, comma, E? This is an interview question in Virtusa last year. Very simple. A zero, no. Ah, Abhishek. 20, 20, 20, very near. Sai Jain. Oh, Sandhya. 2015, more closer. Wonderful. Now you are getting the right answers. 
Seven. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you the right answer. Twenty, comma, twenty, comma, fifteen, comma, five, comma, five. Hey, Harinika, wonderful. I'll tell you how. Guys, main functions execution time is actually the total execution time of the program. Add functions five seconds are in those twenty seconds itself. Did you get my point? Shall I repeat it again? Hmm. Guys, guys. Actually, where is the start of the program and end of the program? Main function. Add is not addition to main. Add is an integral part of main function. What I'm talking is execution of add is an integral part of main function. Did you get my point? Main function is twenty seconds. That means the whole program execution time is twenty seconds. There is no twenty-five here. Where are these five seconds of add? They are inside those twenty minutes, twenty itself. So A is twenty. B is also twenty. Main function's execution time A and B slight less than twenty. It is fine, but A and B are twenty. When is C getting memory allocated? After the add function is executed. Then C memory allocation is done. So from twenty, remove that five. It is less than fifteen is the right answer, but you can talk about fifteen also. Did you all get the reasoning right, or shall I repeat it again? Okay, okay. Now, why did we go? Why, why, yeah, yeah, Rishik. I'll repeat the question again. Okay, okay. No problem, no problem, guys, guys. Now let's see how the program executes. First line of execution, a is equal to ten. Okay, then it will go to main function. Okay, how much is the main function execution time? Twenty seconds. Okay, then it will go to b. Okay, b is equal to twenty. Then it will go to c. Now at c. Int C is equal to add of B. Which one will be executed first? Int C will execute first, or add of B will be executed first? Add function. So from add, main functions twenty seconds are not completed. From add call, it will go to add body. I'll use the annotation. Just a second. See, from here it will go here. From here here. From here here. From here to add dot B. But from add dot b, it did not complete its twenty seconds, but it will jump to add dot add body. Again, this, 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 this. At this return, it will come back to int c. Okay, then it will print. Then it will complete this. Till here, it is now twenty seconds. So where is twenty five seconds? Is there existence of twenty-five seconds? No. It is a confusion which has been created by me. Vishnu and Rishik, did you get my point? There is no twenty-five now. Okay. So twenty is the main functions. Twenty is the main function. Now. Where is uh, how how much is C? When is the memory getting allocated in C? After the five seconds of add function, then it is coming to C. Here, so C's memory allocation is done after add function's memory allocation. So five seconds is already wasted by add. So what will be the Allocation time for C fifteen seconds, and mostly it is less than fifteen seconds. Okay, 
So, but my question is not this also. The question is this, the answer is this, but my intention is not to ask this question. My intention is to make you all understand why you all got deviated. Because you have a lot of assumptions about memory. You all have some certain strategy of how memory is working. Let's clarify whether it is right or wrong. Okay? To understand it, we should go to RAM. RAM has three memory allocations, guys. One is code memory, another one is stack, and another one is heap. These are the three memory allocations in RAM. Okay? This is the architecture diagram of RAM. Code or text memory, stack, and heap. Okay? And Turbo C, which is our point of discussions today, will only include stack and code, code or text memory. Structured programming includes only these two. Only these two. This pointer. Object-oriented programming includes code and text memory, stack to heap memory, and code to heap memory. Okay, object-oriented programming means Java, Python, all those use heap. But Turbo C language uses stack and code or text memory. We will take up heap in our next session. Okay, but for now, we'll take up code or text memory and stack. Okay, first let's understand what are they. Code or text memory is the memory which loader loads all the instructions into. You got connected with the backend components. There is a component called loader. What does loader do? Loader loads all the instructions from assembler into code or text memory. Okay. And th those all those uh, instructions are given All those instructions are given uh, address locations like this. One zero zero one, one zero zero two, one zero zero three, one zero zero four, like that. Okay. So for our previous program, how many address locations you can have? Oh, I have to stop the annotation. No. For our previous program, uh, parenthesis is also an address location. Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, in RAM, uh, now there will be those 11 or 12 or 13 address locations. Each statement is given to each address location, guys. Okay? <clears throat> this pointer is a two-sided pointer. Two-sided plus one incremental pointer. Okay? Yeah. Two-sided incremental pointer. Okay? Where? And it is a plus one incremental pointer. That is how it does line by line execution. This pointer will move like this. Plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. Okay? While the pointer in code, test, code or text memory goes like this after the executable file is given. Plus one, plus one, plus one. The, va the values will get into stack like this. The variables and functions in the instructions will get pushed into stack. Did you all get my point till here? I need a yes or I'll repeat it again. All incremented values, all variables and methods which have to be executed will be stored in stack. 
parenthesis. If it is executed, why it will get stored in stack? Okay, variables. If they are executed, they will be pushed into stack. Function is executed, it will be pushed into stack because they have to get executed. Execution can only be happen in storage, and execution happens in stack. Okay, storage and execution happens in stack. Okay, I'll repeat it again. Listen to it carefully. Yeah, yeah. Guys, step one, all the instructions will be loaded into code or text memory. Step one, all the instructions. Now, all those instructions are in which language? Yes, Bhargavi. Low level, low A level. Ah, binary code. Okay, not assembly Shivani. Assembler converted the assembly level language code to machine code and then it gave to loader. So loader loads all these instructions in binary code into code or text memory and each line of code, the code will not, line of code will not change. The code will get converted into binary code or machine code. Okay. So that each line of code will be written here, here and each address location will have one line of code. Okay. Now execution will start. How will execution happen? Line by line. How? Because we have a plus one incremental pointer pointed to the code in text memory. So plus one. Okay. What is the first line in that code? Int a is equal to 10. So when this incremental pointer is done plus one, that 10 will get pushed into stack like this. After pushing, what will happen? We'll see in the next presentation. But did you understand this architecture? Only the relationship between code and text memory and stack. Each line of execution, <coughs> the variables and functions or whatever has to be executed will be pushed into stack. Okay. I need a big yes if you people have understood. Okay, so this is about loader. Okay, loader loads the uh, binary code into code and text memory and gives out an exe file. This is loader. Now there is linker. What does linker do? Now, as I told you in my previous slide. Uh, uh, okay, now uh, let me give. Uh, okay, each. I told you, right, each line will be given an address location. Okay. Let the address location be 1, 2, 3, 4, uh -oh, 5, I'm sorry, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1. Uh, Linker loads, linker links the source code with header files to get an executable file. Okay, okay. I'll reframe that statement, Vishnu. Now, where is the predefined bodies? They are in the header files or are attached to this bottom of the program. Bottom. So after 12, you will have 13, you will have 14 like that to some 25 in thing. This is your bottom. Here, cannot write five. Next time I have to write like this. Okay. So 13, 14 to 25. Okay. This is bottom part. This is the top part. Okay. Now the point is, what does linker do? Listen to it very carefully. Step one, it identifies all the predefined and user defined functions in the program. Okay, it identifies all the predefined and user defined functions of the program. Okay, how many predefined are there in this program? Add printf, sorry, uh, printf plus define two. Good. Uh, okay, yeah. How many user defined functions are there? 
one, one reference. Okay. So one user defined function and two predefined functions. Now, step one, identify all the user defined and predefined function calls. Okay. Now these user defined and predefined function calls are linked to its respective function bodies. Uh, plus is an operator, but its predefined function is in uh, math.h. Yeah, sometimes operator can also be a function call. Let's not get into it, Abhiram. Okay, so step one, identify the predefined and user defined functions, function calls. Step two, link them with the function bodies. Now, printf is here at six. Where is the function body? Uh, Kirtana, main is a starting point. We don't have any work to be done with main. So, though it is, it is user defined only, but let's not bother about it. Okay. Main is a typical case. It is like a main door of a house. It has to be there. Okay. Yes, yes, Shivani. No need to include... Uh, math.h for operator because turbo C's present versions use plus as operator, but previous versions, they use uh, uh, plus as a function call. We used, when we were doing turbo C, we used those versions. So that's why you're right. You're right. Okay. Now the point is printf function is here, function call, but body is here. So what it will do is, at six, it will write go to 13. Okay. At add, it will write go to eight. Okay. Please understand this, guys. One, two, three, four, five, go to eight. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Come back to 6. Go to 13. 13, 14, 15, 16, 25. Come back. 7. Execution. Okay. This is what linker does. It links all the predefined function bodies. At, okay, okay. One more thing is at 12, it will write oh, oh. go to 5. Okay. At 25, it will write go to 6. This is the job of linker students. Okay. Is this clear till here? This is what linker does. It decides the flow of process of com execution, not compilation, Vishnu. It decides the flow of process of execution. Okay, okay, Jayant, I'll tell you again. Listen to it very carefully. Guys, now this program has to execute, right? How will the line by line execution goes in the correct way if you don't link the predefined and user defined function calls to its respective function bodies? Okay, it has to go like this one plus one, two, next line three, next line four, next line five. But from add, where it should go? Should it go to six? Seven and close it. Yes or no? It cannot go like that. It has to go to eight. From add, it has to go. That's how, that's how you got 140. But who is telling to go from five to eight? Linker. Who is telling to go from six to 13? Linker. How do you do that? Go to statement. Okay, wherever you have a function call, the linker identifies a function call, it changes its instruction to go to 8. With input parameters, it will go to 8. 
10, 8, 9, 10, 11 written will send it to go to 5. Again, it will come back to 5. Then int C. Then it will come to printf. From printf, it is a predefined function again. So it has to go to the body. So 13, 14, 15, 16. Again, it will come to 6 and then execute 7. Is this clear, guys? This is the main functioning of linker. If you understand, I'll go to the next slide. Linker links predefined function call to respect to not only predefined RIMSA, predefined and user defined. Both. Add is a user defined. Printf is a predefined. Okay. So till here you are fine. So this flow you understood, right? Let me go to the next slide now. Yeah. In this slide, guys, as I told you, this code and text memory pointer will go in the way we have defined. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. At 5, it will go to 8. It will jump to 8. This pointer, I told you, right, it will go like this, stepwise. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But from 5, it will directly go to 8. Okay, then execute 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And from 13, it will again go to come to 5. Okay, this pointer will go like that and come back. Go again forward, come back. While it is doing this, this stack pointer will hold the values which are pushed into stack, which release the values which have to be popped out of stack. This operation and stacks this operation will execute the program. Is this clear till here? We have more 10 minutes, guys. Most end. That 10 minutes, you will understand the exact operation in the memory. But did you understand this point? Code and text memory will be plus one, plus one incremental pointer. Okay. And stack will be <clears throat> like this. For holding like this, pushing and holding. For popping, it will go down. Pop out. Are we clear till here? If not, don't worry. Our next two slide will solve it. But at least minimum to minimum, did you understand what code or text memory does and stack does? Yes or no? Okay, okay. I'm going to the next slide, which is the last slide for today's session. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is the last slide students. Okay. This is our program and we'll see how, how the operation is done in stack. Okay. What is the first, first uh, push into the stack? A. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. Okay. Int A is equal to 10 is first to push into stack. Okay. Then it is the main function. So once the, once this is pushed in stack, the stack pointer will, will be here. Okay. And, oh, oh. Oops. Okay. And this will, Go and stay at the code and text memory. Next to plus one. Okay. Plus one in code and text memory. Next line will get executed. Main is just indication, an open door where you can get in. But the second memory allocation is given to P is equal to 20. Okay. What is the next step, guys? What is the next step which gets executed? Add of B. Okay. Next step is add of B. Okay. 
when variables when they are pushed in only one memory allocation is enough but when a function has to be pushed in you need three memory allocations to it when a function has to be executed you need three memory allocations one one is for written type what is a written type int int is a written type so yeah so int is stored these are all about push leave about pop okay second memory allocation is for the go to address where it should go because it is a function call we need three memory allocations one is written type go to address and the third one is input parameter okay what is the input parameter for this function d and the value of b the value of b is copied into bit by bit copied into d value of b value of b is bit by bit copied into d this is called pass by value yeah actual parameter b formal parameter d wonderful vishnu so this is called pass by value okay bit by bit copying from one register to another register is called uh, pass by value okay this is done next step so uh, if a function has to be stored in stack how many memory allocations it will take answer me 3 first one is written type second one is go to address third one is input parameter okay once it is there now we are at the execution of the add function okay so now add function execution starts okay push d plus 120 yeah d plus 120 is the work of arithmetic logic unit okay not stack so d plus 120 is done where it should be stored e how much 140 so that push is done here okay next step yeah next step is from written e the value is returned to int c so that will be pushed into the stack okay see here now you need to understand the logic very clearly guys from written e it is going to c right so the code and text memory it has gone to written e it will come back to c that means the stack pointer which is here okay this has to come down okay so what happens is while C while the one forty is given to C, all this will pop out, and this written type there is a allocation right. This into C is equal to one forty will be in this location. Into C is equal to one forty will be in this location. At the end, what all you are left? A is left here. b is left and c is left if you ask print f of c or print f of a or print f of b because they are in location they will be printed if you ask print f of d no because they are all popped out okay these three are left this is how memory management takes place in stack Should I explain again in two minutes? We have more five minutes. One last time, or did you all understand? Shall I repeat? One last time. Okay, okay. One last time, <clears throat> guys. The whole program, you all would have understood code and text memory and stack operations. 
every variable one location it will take every function three locations it will take but once the function is executed and when it comes back to its original predefined predefined function from function call function body it completes the function body and come back to function call okay it will pop out all the variables in the stack okay while popping out only thing which will be left behind is the written type memory allocation into that the written type value will come and stay so function execution and coming out only the written type value will be stored in the memory allocation all others will be popped out guys this is again very important in our brain do you remember the whole action of events happened in the past or you will remember the most of them you will remember the output of that action while doing the action you may use the brain but once that action is done only the output will be so this is also taken from real world itself okay so there is one more important point now tell me after understanding this stack operation now tell me why a is called a global variable now you understood it can be accessed by all functions why it can be accessed by all the functions why we can use it throughout the program these are all what why why we can use something which is written on the top because it is the last one to come out when it is okay tell me what got introduced first ram or programming language which got invented first ram got in, invented first so stack got invented what is the operation of stack last in first out is it last in first out or first in last out oi both are same if it is last in it will come first if it is first first in then it will come last both are stack behaviors so if you send some variable inside the stack first okay that can be accessed throughout the program in all the functions first in last out so that's why global variable is written at the top so when you when you think when you start thinking why if something is written on the top only will be accessed why trust me you start sitting on the google and start looking at articles with why you will get this answer if you have not got this answer till now then you are struggling with what which is not the right approach and in first year if you think about why i'm promising you guys by third year you will be in either facebook google or any new company which is very top product based companies in the world don't stop at what if you stop at what this is the definition you get global variable is written on the top and it will be accessed across the if you'll start thinking of why oh we are writing it at the top because the stack behavior is if it goes first into the stack then only it will be accessed till the end is it clear guys yes or no okay now tell me next question why is local variable local to a function <clears throat> why is a variable local to a function
Y is a variable local to a function. This is my last question. Yeah. No, no, no. It is because function once it is executed in stack, it will, it gets popped out. <clears throat> Your answers should be more related to memory because whatever is shown outside is nothing. It is just a glimpse of what is happening in the memory. Yes, yes, Remsa. Is it not very simple? First, when it gets in, it will come last. Because it is getting popped out, it is local. Are these meaningful? Now you understood why they are like that? Why the the programming language is defined? It has been defined like that to accommodate the behavior of stack. So if you understand this, that becomes clear. Okay. So this end my session for today. But I don't want to end this session without asking you a few questions of what we have studied today. Shall we have it? Okay. Just to uh, revise, not I'll not explain anything, just a revi revision. Okay. But I want quick answers. This will let me understand whether I need to take another seminar or not for you in the future, if time permits. My first question. What do you mean by runtime? Mention in the chat box. What do you mean by runtime? Time between .exe and output. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Next question. What do you mean by runtime error? What do you mean by runtime error? Errors formed due to the values in the memory. Okay. Errors formed due to the values in the memory. Wonderful. Wonderful. What do you mean? Debugger. What do you mean by debugger? Super, super. Wonderful. What do you mean by preprocessor? Guys, I'm getting 40, 50 answers at a time. Wonderful. What do you mean by debugger? Displays. Okay, okay. Appends the function definition to the bottom of the source code. Wonderful, wonderful. No, no, no. no. Preprocessor, Bargavi. Oh, you. Okay. Stores predefined code. Super, super. Right, bottom of the source code. Wonderful. What is meant by linker? What is meant by linker? Super. Pop.
what is meant by a programming language what do you mean by a programming language this is the last question i'm stopping it no no there is one more long last question this is last but one application and hardware super super last question what do you mean by technology tool software in internal pages excellent excellent what do you mean by technology tools <laughs> dot c to dot e x wonderful Wow, this is exuberant, wonderful, wonderful. So oh, this session stops here. I'm very happy that uh, this is one of the means I would have taken some in the past ten years various topics. I would have taken some thousands of sessions. This is one of the best guys, really. one of the best for the way you have interacted okay very happy feeling accomplished this weekend will go very nicely for me okay so uh guys uh if you get some time so you please uh, this is my name durga navin kandregla you can just check the youtube videos tedx talk i have given just i did not speak those content here it will be an add on content for you all working okay and uh, one more thing is uh, uh, we want your feedback not only in this group but also in insta in our gold street uh, uh page it will help us in promoting such kind of sessions in other colleges okay thank you thank you very much Yeah, ma'am. Done. Yeah. Now I like. But they we have to propose out of thanks. We'll meet in person, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rigashree from Biotechnology, first year. I deem it honored and privileged to propose out of uh, thanks for this memorable occasion. First and foremost, I would like to thank our resource person, Dr. K. Durga Navin Sir, co-founder and CEO of Gold Street and uh, CEO at uh, Coin, who, despite his uh, busy schedule, has found uh, time to grace his uh, grace his grace this occasion to make us enlighten with the programming and uh, for made us fall in love with the programming, and we would like to thank our. Uh, our heartfelt thank to our principal professor pri ravinder reddy sir of uh, chaitanya bharti institute of technology who support us and guide us and we would like to thank professor nln reddy sir director cdc for uh, providing us initiation and the platform for us to learn and we are grateful to thank our uh, head of the department uh, professor b shrinivas reddy sir for his encouragement and uh, we thank you for his kindness his interest and his hospitality and continuous support our heartfelt thanks to our hods and other various department faculty for their valuable support we thank ms t pratima ma'am and mrs p vimla manohar ruth ma'am for encouraging and organizing this event and gave us wonderful opportunity to learn the process of converting the source code into executable code and memory management in a programming we owe special gratitude to non teaching staff who worked hard for this occasion we thank each and every student and 
who have uh, attended the guest lecture thank you for your keen attention we would like to have your participation in many such events organized by chaitanya bharati institute of technology kindly fill the feedback form and attendance form if you did not fill it yet once again i thank you all for your attention and participation thank you sir i'll be in touch i am ending the session ma'am uh, yes sir yes sir you can thank you thank you thank you sir thank you